Hi everyone, I am Lily Zoruria from the ASEAN Sogi Caucus. Welcome to the Hear Queer Stories podcast series with the theme of Intersecting Rainbows, Progress, Challenges, and Solidarity Within the Queer Movement. This podcast series is created by ASEAN Sogi Caucus, which aims at magnifying voices of Queer Brings community in Southeast Asia. We hope this can help strengthen the communities despite the adversities and difficult events they face. In the making of the podcast series, we collaborated with three young Indonesian activists, Ayunita, Purba, and Krishna. This episode is hosted by Purba. Thank you so much, Lini, for introducing us. Hello, Quirblings. My name is Purba. I'm your host for today's episode. In this episode, we would like to explore the progress of the LGBTI plus movement in Timor Leste, the impacts of Pride Parade to the visibility of queer individuals in the country, the challenges, and especially uh, what's next after the Pride Parade. We are now joined by Laura, a prominent human rights activist in Timor Leste. Hello, Laura. It's so great Hi. to have Hi. you at the podcast. How are you? Thank you. I'm good. Thanks. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. I'm joining in. I'm calling you from Bali. It's summer here every day. <laughs> Could you tell us a little bit about you and the work you do? Um, well, right now I'm working as a legal advisor at the National Institute uh, to Defend Children's Rights. And I'm also, I'm also active as a human rights activist, especially marginalized group rights. Oh, that's an amazing work that you do. Um, by the way, Laura, I would like to congratulate you for successfully organizing the Pride Parade. I read on the news, it was a blast. Tell me more about it. Um, indeed, it was a blast. It was organized by a coalition of LGBTIQ plus organization, activists and civil society in Timor-Leste, such as Hatutang, Kodiva and Arquiris. And the total of people joining the parade was 7,000. That's excluding mm. people who watch it. And that's actually a big jump, right, in attendance. Yeah. Uh, from only, I think, 500 people in the first parade in 2017. Yes. And then in 2018, it was uh, 1,500 around that, right? Yeah. So now... Uh, I'm just curious, what do you think of their motivations, uh, you know, for participating? Um, yeah, people attended the parade for vari variety of reasons. Mm -hmm. um, some people wanted to show their support for LGBTIQ plus rights. Mm -hmm. um, Others wanted to raise, a, to raise awareness of the challenges facing the LGBT wow. LGBTQI plus community mm. in Timor-Leste and the rest mm. simply wanted to celebrate their identity. Wow. Oh my God. You know what? I wish I was there joining the parade. I got goosebumps, you know, by just listening to your story. Uh, but I will be there next year. Do you know the exact date when it's happening again, Max? Um, we don't have the exact date yet, but mm -hmm. it's around mm -hmm. the same month, um, around June or July next year. Ah, okay. That's all right. Um, so, uh, Laura, well, to begin, uh, what's the, what's, what's the goal of the pride parade actually? Um, the goal of the parade is to raise awareness of LGBTQI plus rights in Timor-Leste. We also wanted to show the world that there is a strong and very vibrant LGBTQ plus community in the, in the country through this, through this parade. The queer community in Timor Leste uh, feels they have found a place where they can express themselves freely, without yeah. having to hide. Um, and there are also those who, through this parade, have discovered their their true mm -hmm. self. I see. Um, is there any, you know, just one example or personal, you know, story from uh, those involved in the parade? Yeah, one of the queer people said, um, all this time, 
he was mm -hmm. hiding his identity. He didn't yeah. dare to express himself because he was afraid of his family. Um, his parents also said, you have to be a normal man. Um, however, after participating in this parade, he told himself that he had to be himself without having a worry about people's opinion of him. Right. That's really encouraging uh, story. Um, you know, I, I have to admit, Laura, that I am very envious about the positive progress, uh, you know, Timor-Leste has made in terms of uh, human rights protection, especially for LGBTQ plus people. Yeah, for example, uh, same-sex relations are legal throughout the country in, in, in the modern state. And then uh, your penal code protects against crimes uh, motivated by discriminatory uh, attitudes towards you know, someone's sexual orientation. Uh, um, and also LGBTIQ plus organizations are able to register. And of course, obviously, you know, being able to run a pride parade with um, astounding support from the people and the government of Timor Leste. Yeah. I, I think, in fact, in was it in twenty twenty two when President Jose Ramos Horta um, uh, marched together? Uh, yep. Did he? Yes. Did he yes, he. Yeah. Yes, he, he was. He was a uh, part of the crowd. Um, right. Okay. When we start the parade. Right. Did he support you again this time? Yep. He he is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh would you uh, tell him, you know, share a little bit more about you know his support, like why he supported uh, the vibrate? Well, um he was announced publicly um mm -hmm. to everyone, especially um his staff in uh the uh, in his office, mm -hmm. he's, um, he was saying that um, everyone needs to participate and everyone needs to support LGBT, right. LGBTQI plus uh, right. parade in our country because mm -hmm. we all the same. We all the same. Oh, right. You know, not not so many not so many countries in Southeast Asia have uh, progressed. You know, this much. I think. I think, you know, I would say Timor Leste seems to be doing very okay, right? So what do you think then, you know, Timor Leste should focus on next? Um, I think the next step is we need to do advocacy. Um, there is a lack of legal protections for, for LGBTIQ plus people in Timor Leste does not have any laws that specifically protect mm. LGBTIQ plus people uh, from discrimination um, right. In this level, in this in this leaves them vulnerable to abuse. Right, 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 right. So you have the policy, but no legal document, right? Yeah, we have the policy, right. but no legal document. I mean, the mm -hmm. government is supporting us, but no legal document. Um, yeah, the document needs to specifically mention LGBT LGBTQI plus rights. Right. Yes, yes, yes. That's really amazing. Uh, especially because also, you know, Timor-Leste is just a step away from joining ASEAN. Yep. Uh, once Timor-Leste is officially in, uh, 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 Timor-Leste would be the second most uh, uh, progressed country in the group, right? So do you think Timor-Leste could influence other countries in the region to follow the steps uh, Timor-Leste has taken? Um, well, First of all, um, we are we are proud because of the many countries on the Asia continent. Um, mm. Timor Leste is a new country, is right. known as a country that up, upholds human rights values without right. this distinguishing between existing differences. Most mm. of our politicians have pro thinking and make regulation that require everyone to respect each other without mm. looking. To yeah. without looking at the differences that exist, um, right. I think yeah. every country has a different beliefs and cultures. So maybe Timor Leste can influence mm. by inviting activists, member of parliaments, and government institutions to participate yeah. in upcoming parade. 
Pride Parade Mars. Um, yes. That way, state officials can see firsthand how Timor Leste is a new country and appreciate the existing differences without ex exceptions. Perfect. I am looking forward to see governments and you know uh, 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 more people from outside Timor Leste joining the Pipe Parade next year. Laura, thank you so much for sharing your stories and shedding light um, on the impact of Pride Break, uh, the progress and the challenges of the LGBTQ plus movement in Timor Leste State. Uh, we are definitely looking forward to seeing how Timor Leste State progresses and particularly uh, influences other countries in the region. Dear audience, if you found this episode insightful, Please subscribe to our podcast and share it with others. Together, let's amplify the voices of marginalized communities and work towards a future of true equality. Please follow ASEAN Soji Focus on Facebook and Twitter at ASEAN Soji and on Instagram at ASEAN Soji Focus. This podcast is produced under the Creative Commons license. I'm Purban. Until next time. Bye. Bye.